Alan Stratton from Asla Turns. Thanksgiving is a time for expressing gratitude for many things, and I, for one, give thanks to each of you who are watching my videos, and a special thanks to those who are offering comments and feedback. Now, for Thanksgiving, I decided to make a small uh, butternut squash. This one is modeled after one that grew in my garden, didn't grow so well, and it didn't turn out quite as well as I thought. It's a little bit weird shaped. But what are the rules for squash and gourds anyway? But the special plus for this one is, as your mother always tells you to eat your squash, then you can have a special treat inside. Let's make a butternut squash. Since this is a small butternut squash, I did not vary the ring size. All my segment rings are four inches in diameter. To find the distance around the ring, I had to multiply four inches by pi, or 3.14159. This is a circumference of 12.57 inches. Dividing 12.57 inches by eight segments per ring yields 1.57 inches for the long side of the segment. For those mathematically inclined, this is not precise, but is close enough. For an eight-sided polygon, divide 360 degrees by eight for 45 degrees. However, since two segments make up this angle, each contributes one half to the 45 degrees. So divide by two. The saw angle is 22 and a half degrees. I cut the segments from a board one and one half inches wide, filping the board over after each cut. Then I glued the segments into pairs. I found my padded clamp did a good job applying some pressure for just a few minutes, not a full cure time. I used Type Bond Original Extend, which is supposed to have less glue line creep and sand better. Extended time is not necessary for this size of ring. After the pairs set, I glued them into semicircles, separating each half with a couple of small pieces of wood. These pieces take up the inevitable slop. A large band clamp from an automotive store provides the clamping pressure. After the glue is set again, I sanded the faces to eliminate gaps and glued the two half rings into full rings with the same band clamps. After each was dry, I sanded the faces smooth. Then I started building the top and the bottom on two separate threaded wood faceplates. Hot melt glue holds the first layer to the faceplate. Then I faced off each layer before gluing the next layer. All subsequent layers are glued with Type Bond Original Extend. From here, the process is similar to a solid box. Now for the top portion. With this simple shape, there's not much exterior shaping at this point. Then on to hollowing the inside. This is different than an end grain box, since it is all face grain. It's kind of fun. I'll start out with a bowl gouge. Next will be to start to form the mortise or recess for the joint. I don't have a heavy square scraper, so I'll use my square carbide cutter. The carbide is not ideal since it cannot do deep boring as well, since the mounting bar gets in the way. But with a little care, it does the job. Whoops, what happened to my squash? Did it get squashed? It turns out that one of the layers in the faceplate must have had a split that I had not noticed. It was from the end of the board and gave way. I glued it back together, then reinforced the faceplate with several quarter inch dowels drilled in from the back nearly through the, all the faceplate layers. Fortunately, it did not throw it off very much. Back to work cutting the mortise using a square part carbide cutter. I'll stop and place a pen inside the mortise, then sight along the pen to the way the bed weighs. I want the sides of the mortise parallel. The pen tends to magnify any discrepancy. Adjust my cutting angle and repeat until they are. Then the rest of the hollowing. Then sand and finish the interior. I used my mineral oil and beeswax mix for a finish as my recipe here calls for chocolate candies to be inside. Now for the bottom. First I'll do some rough exterior shaping.
but the main business is cutting the tenon to mate to the mortise on the top. Easy does it. I've messed this up at this stage before. I cut a chamfer on the end, test the fit, cut away the tenon to most of the chamfer, then repeat until I get the fit I want. I don't want it super tight, nor sloppy loose. Loose enough to require a paper towel for a tight mounting fit is about right. Now with a paper towel between the top and the bottom, I'll finish shaping the top exterior and a little of the bottom exterior. It's time to get rid of the faceplate on the bottom segment. I'll finish up with some shear scraping. Then drill out the hole in the top with a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit, sand and finish the top. Now for the bottom. With the top removed and the exterior mostly defined, I'll hollow out the box first with a gouge, then with a carbide cutter. Now I'll make a jam chuck to reverse mount the bottom. Similar process to cut a mortise to fit the tenon. This MDF face is nasty, but at least it's uniform. I tapped it in to seat it in the mortise, then brought up the tailstock. I used a penny between the point of my tailstock and the bottom of the box to avoid marring the bottom. Mr. Lincoln did a great job. After shear scraping, I sanded up through the grits and finished the remainder of the box. Now for the stem that will also serve as a handle. I'll try to mimic the shape of the stem in Luburnum, also known as Golden Chain, a very hard, dense wood. I'll cut a tenon to match the hole in the top of the box. With the tenon finished, I remounted it in a chuck to finish. Voila! My squash recipe is complete. What could be better than butternut squash and chocolate candies for Thanksgiving or any time I feel like a chocolate treat? Nobody is going to encourage me to eat this squash. However, now as an adult, I enjoy squash. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my website and YouTube channel. Safe turning makes for good turning. Please wear your face shield when you're turning. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.